On December 1, 2025, the global technology industry woke up to what people are calling the 0.1% problem. Imagine you're building a skyscraper, and uh, a foreign power suddenly announces that if even a single bolt in that entire building contains a trace amount of their steel, they basically own the rights to decide who can live in it. Well, that's exactly what China just did to the semiconductor world. The new policy is, honestly, a total game changer. It states that any lithography-related equipment, the massive, multi-million dollar machines used to print microchips, must apply for a Chinese export license if they contain just 0.1% or more of Chinese origin rare earth materials. To put that in perspective, 0.1% is a tiny fraction. It's like saying if a single drop of ink in a gallon of water came from China, the whole bucket is now under Beijing's legal control. This isn't just about shipping rocks from a mine, this is a digital dragnet. It doesn't matter if the machine was assembled in the Netherlands, sold to a company in Japan, and then shipped to a factory in Arizona. If that 0.1% threshold is met, China demands to know the end-user details. They want to know exactly who is using the machine and what they are making. This red line effectively closes every loophole. In the past, companies could try to wash their supply chains by routing parts through third-party countries like Singapore or Mexico. Not anymore. By setting the bar at 0.1%, China hasn't just put up a fence. They've installed a global tracking system on the very heart of the high-tech supply chain. The shockwaves were instant. Why? Because lithography machines are the most complex tools ever built by humans. And as we're about to see, you simply cannot build them without the materials China now controls with, well, an iron fist. But to understand why China pulled this kill switch now, we have to look back at a corporate heist that happened just two months earlier. To understand why China is now squeezing the world's rare earth supply, we have to look at what happened on September 30th, 2025. This was the day the Dutch government did something almost unheard of in modern business. They effectively seized a Chinese-owned company on European soil. The target was Nexperia, a massive semiconductor firm headquartered in the Netherlands. Even though it's based in the Dutch city of Nijmegen, it's been owned by the Chinese giant Wingtech Technology since 2019. For years, it operated quietly, making the workhorse chips that power everything from your car's brakes to your phone's battery. But in late September, the Dutch government invoked a rarely used Cold War era law called the Goods Availability Act. Without a trial or a public hearing, they suddenly removed Nexperia's Chinese CEO, Zhang Shuizheng, and replaced him with a Dutch executive. They didn't stop there. The Amsterdam Court of Appeal transferred 99% of the company's voting rights to an independent third-party trust. The Dutch justification? They claimed there were serious governance shortcomings and that they needed to protect economic security. They feared that since the U.S. had blacklisted the parent company, Wingtech, Nexperia's technology might be secretly funneled back to China. One week after the Netherlands announced its so-called takeover of Nexperia, authorities in Beijing did something, well, brilliantly simple. They didn't bother trying to sue the Dutch government in an international court. Instead, they just issued an export control notice that, honestly, cut the soul out of the company. To understand why this was so devastating, you have to look at how Nexperia actually works. While its headquarters and lawyers are based in the Netherlands, its real muscle is in China. Nexperia owns this massive 80,000 square meter facility in Guangdong. That's where the magic happens. The packaging, the testing, and the final assembly of the chips. When Beijing issued its new regulation, it basically prohibited this Guangdong facility from exporting core products, specifically automotive power semiconductors, back to Europe. The result was immediate and, frankly, catastrophic for the Dutch side. Production plummeted. The capacity utilization of Nexperia's China facilities dropped from a healthy 90% to less than 10% almost overnight. And the supply chain? Delivery capability to European customers didn't just dip. It plunged from 95% down to a measly 3%.
When you think of high-tech chips, you probably imagine the powerful processors inside your MacBook or iPhone. But the chips Nexperia makes are different. They're the blue-collar chips, the resistors, transistors, and power modules that actually make a car work. In a modern car, these chips are everywhere. They control your power windows, your anti-lock brakes, those LED headlights, and even the battery management in your EV. You might have 200 Nexperia chips in a single vehicle. And as European car makers found out in late 2024, if you're missing just one of those 200 chips, you simply cannot ship the car. The impact was like a heart attack for the European economy. Volkswagen, the titan of German engineering, was forced to halt production of its most popular models, the Golf and the Tigyan, at its massive Wolfsburg plant. The losses were staggering, exceeding 100 million euros per day. At BMW, the wait time for a high-end model jumped from three months to six months. Customers were ready to pay, but the cars were just sitting on lots unfinished, waiting for those tiny pieces of silicon stuck in China. And the human cost? In just two weeks, over 12,000 workers across Europe faced temporary layoffs or reduced hours. By November 2025, the Nexperia crisis had managed to do something that years of diplomacy simply couldn't. It turned the heavyweights of Europe against the Netherlands. The German Association of the Automotive Industry didn't just ask the Dutch government to fix the problem. They issued a final ultimatum. The message was crystal clear. If the Netherlands couldn't resolve its dispute with China and restore the flow of Nexperia chips, Germany, France, and Italy were prepared to take drastic measures to protect their own economies. They threatened to invoke Article 17 of the EU Chips Act. This is, essentially, a crisis exemption mechanism. If used, it would allow these countries to bypass Dutch legal control and place Nexperia's European facilities into projects of common European interest. The political pressure was unlike anything The Hague had ever seen. On one side, the Netherlands argued they were protecting Europe from Chinese influence, talking about economic sovereignty versus EU unity. On the other side, Germany fired back, saying that security doesn't mean much if your largest industry, automotive, collapses and your workers are out in the streets. The lithography bombshell of late 2025 has, well, signaled the end of an era. For decades, the global tech industry was built on the idea that trade and technology were two separate worlds. But today, they are absolutely one and the same. By setting the 0.1% red line, China has basically checkmated the Dutch strategy. The Netherlands tried to use legal maneuvers and ownership changes to save Nexperia and follow U.S. sanctions, but they hit a wall of physical reality. You can own the brand, you can own the patents, and you can even own the CEO's office. But if you don't own the refined minerals or the factory floor, you're really just left with an empty shell. This story isn't just about two countries, it's a preview of a new asymmetric war. The West is fighting with intellectual property, denying China the software and the blueprints for the future. China, meanwhile, is fighting with physical reality, throttling the materials and manufacturing capacity that the West needs to survive right now. The results are already visible. As ASML watches its eight-week clock tick down and German car plants sit silent, the world is realizing that decoupling isn't a clean break. It's a messy, expensive, and potentially devastating surgery. If the Netherlands continues down this path, they risk sacrificing their national champion, ASML, and their relationship with their closest neighbors in Europe, all just to satisfy a geopolitical directive from across the Atlantic. At the most basic level, the imbalance of interest is the real tragedy. The Netherlands needs Chinese materials to build machines, and the world needs Nexperia's Chinese-made chips to build cars. Until a truly viable non-Chinese supply chain exists, which, by the way, experts say could take a decade and hundreds of billions of dollars, the 0.1% rule will remain the ultimate kill switch.
So where does this leave us? We're entering a world where the price of your next car, the availability of the next iPhone, and the stability of the European economy are all tied to just a few grams of refined earth sitting in a warehouse in Guangdong. What do you think? Should the Netherlands have stood their ground with Nexperia, or did they underestimate the cost of offending their primary supplier? Is economic security worth the collapse of the automotive industry? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on the ever-changing global supply chain. Thanks for watching.